Hi everyone, it's Calculus by Christy, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about what often feels like a challenging topic, finding the derivative of an inverse. But first, I wanna give a huge shout out to Math Gives You Power, AKA Slope Dude. You are awesome. You made my day by buying me not just one, but two coffees. Seriously, you are so awesome. If you haven't checked out Math Gives You Power YouTube channel yet, click here. He's got some awesome videos and do not forget to check out his video Slope Dude. Wonderful, amazing, amazing work. Um, and thank you again, Math Gives You Power. Like I said, you just made my day. Thank you so much. And now back to the video. And I hope by going over this, this challenging topic of finding the derivative of an inverse becomes just a little bit easier. So before we head on and start this problem, let me first explain how to find the derivative of an inverse. So on this graph, let's say we have the function f of x. And I want to graph the inverse, f inverse of x. Well, first you have to realize, all right, so what do you know about inverses? And what happens is with an original function, you have an x and a y coordinate. And on the inverse function, the x and the y coordinates are going to be switched. So let's take a look. So here we have the point, let's see, what is that at? 4, 3. Over here, we've got the point 0, 2. Down here, negative 1, negative 1. And down here, we've got the point negative 2, negative 4. So I'm going to graph those points on the inverse function. So the point 4, 3 will change to 3, 4 right here. 0, 2, oh, and let me go ahead and write that. All right, the point 0, 2 will change to 2, 0. The point negative one, negative one, guess what? That's gonna stay exactly where it is because if we switch the X and Y coordinates, the point does not change. And then let's see, the point negative two, negative four will change to negative four, negative two on the inverse function. And let's go ahead and connect those points. There we go. And this one in pink is f inverse of x. So you can see the original function f of x and the graph of its inverse. And a little fun fact also about a function and its inverse function are those two lines are reflections of each other over this line y equals x. And if I draw this in, you can see that reflection just a little bit easier. Another little fun fact about inverse functions. All right. So what I would like to point out is this. So once again, let's take, let's say take a point on the original function. So let's say I take the point, um, I don't know, let's go with two and this point right here, which would be 2.5. All right, on the inverse function, that point now becomes 2.5, two, which would be 2.5. 5, 2, which would be right here. All right, so now I want to talk about the derivatives of these functions. So let's start with f prime of 2. And just a reminder, we're always going to find derivatives at x values. So if 2 is the x value of f of x, we find the derivative at that x value. So let's look at the graph at an x value of 2. Let's look at the f of x graph, and we need to find the slope of this line segment right here. And you can see the function rises 1 and runs 1, 2, 3, 4. So the slope is 1 fourth. Let's look at the derivative of the inverse function at its x value of 2.5, and I wanna see if we notice something. Once again, we take derivatives at x values. So whatever this x value is, remember that is the value that you wanna take the derivative at. Okay, derivative at two and a half on the f inverse function would be the slope of this line segment right here. And this line segment rises one, two, three, four, and runs one. So that slope is four. And I wanna notice a key thing about derivatives of inverse functions. And you may already notice what is true about these derivatives. And that is that they are reciprocals of one another. Okay, keep this in mind when we start the problem, derivatives of inverse functions 
our reciprocals. So let's take a look at the example that we want to find here. So selected values of a one-to-one -one function f of x that is continuous and differentiable for all x and its derivative f prime of x are shown in the table below. And in this problem, we're going to try to find the derivative of f inverse evaluated at 10. And before we start this problem, if you're finding this video useful, make sure to click subscribe. If you're not subscribed yet, I post weekly math videos that can help you learn about calculus or learn in your math classes. All right, so what I like to do is I like to set up this kind of table thing that I had on the last slide. So I first like to have my f of x function and then I like to have my f inverse of function. Notice I haven't taken any derivatives yet. I just like to organize it this way. And then underneath both of these, I'm going to be talking about a specific point. So I'll just kind of get this set up to fill in that ordered pair. And then underneath, let's see, underneath I put the derivatives. So in this problem, I want to find the derivative of the inverse function. So I'm going to write that underneath here, the inverse function derivative, and I want to calculate this derivative of the inverse function at the x value of 10. Now remember, we always find derivatives at x value, so that means this 10 must be the x value of f inverse. And because of the relationship I just talked about, it means then the y value of my original f of x function is 10 because the x coordinate switches to the y coordinate and it's inverse. This is now when I'm going to go to the table. The table has information about f of x. When f of x is 10, the x value is 4. So that helps me replace the x coordinate with 4, which then is the same thing as the y coordinate of its inverse. Over here, I'm going to take the derivative of f of x at its x value of 4, and I'm also going to get that value from the table. So when x is 4, the derivative of f of x is negative 3. And don't forget what I showed you at the very beginning of the video. What's the relationship between the derivatives of a function and its inverse? They are reciprocals. So just like that, I can see that the reciprocal of negative 3 is going to be negative 1 third. And that is your answer of the derivative of the inverse function evaluated at 10. I hope you found this video helpful in finding the derivative of an inverse, and I hope it just made it a little bit easier. And if you did, please make sure to click like and subscribe so that you're notified of future math videos. Have a great day, everyone.